Today, I'm going to talk about the prototype pattern, which is a creational design pattern that involves cloning an object rather than manually creating a new instance via a constructor. So why would you want to clone an object? Well, sometimes creating an object can be computationally expensive or it might be complex to create and configure the object. So rather than going through all that work, we can just clone an already existing object that's already gone through the complex or expensive setup and configuration, and then we can just edit that object to our needs. And since this is a clone, the changes that we make to this object are not going to affect the original instance. So we can do whatever we want, and the prototype that we got the clone from isn't going to be affected. So there's actually a few scenarios where this pattern can be beneficial, and there's other concepts related to this pattern, and we're going to go over as many of those scenarios and concepts related to the prototype pattern in this demo. So I try to make these demos as practical as possible because not every application deals with animals or shapes or colors like some of the other examples out there regarding design patterns so here in this demo we have profiles as in like a user's social media profile so the user's profile can have a name an email associated with it an age which we calculate from the user's date of birth which is a private field and we're going to see how this plays a role in the importance of the prototype pattern in a little bit and then we also have some settings for our profile so a profile can be private the profile can hide the user's email and hide the user's age. And all of these properties are actually just stored on our settings, which is a profile settings object. So if we look at that, just a couple getters and setters on here for those settings. And then continuing on our profile, we just have some simple methods here so we can set those private fields. And then just a helper function down here to calculate the user's age from their date of birth. So in this application, I set up my profile, just throw a placeholder date of birth in there, set up some settings, and then I display the profile, which just writes it out to the console, and it all looks like that. Hide email is true, so that didn't pop up in my general settings, and hide age is false, so my age did pop up. So if we continue in this application, we get a prompt to edit our profile, and it goes through and asks for all the new values that we want for our profile, and then it asks if we would like to save the profile. So let's just enter some new values. So here we go, here is my edited profile. Would I like to save these changes? Now I'm actually gonna say, no, I wouldn't like to save my changes. So it says undoing the profile changes, but then if I look at this, it didn't undo anything. So none of these values match my original profile. So why is that? So if we're editing a profile, we set up this variable for an edit profile, and that points to the same profile instance that I set up in the beginning of this application. So as I put in new values for my profile, these get set directly on the properties of my original profile instance. So even though I chose to not save changes, our changes still get saved because we're not doing anything in here to revert those changes, because we can't. Once we set new values on our profile, we just have no way to get the old values back. So one thing we might think about doing is instead of setting the edit profile, to our original profile instance, we could just create a new profile here and then set up all of our properties. So the email could be the profile email. And then we could continue for all of these properties. And then of course we'd have to set the date of birth for our edit profile. And we need to get the date of birth from our profile. But as we recall, the date of birth is actually private. We can't get it from outside this class. We can only get the age. So that being said, there's really no way that we can just instantiate a new profile, set up that profile to completely match our original profile so that we can set new properties on our profile without affecting our original profile instance. So we can't use the constructor because we can't access the date of birth on the profile and even just instantiating a profile like this and then manually grabbing all of the values from our existing profile, this is all so complicated. So the prototype is gonna save the day. And what we're gonna do is simply clone our original profile. And since this profile is gonna be clonable, then we are gonna be implementing the prototype pattern and it's gonna save the day. So let's set up a method on here that will return a profile and that profile will be the cloned profile. So let's just return a new profile and the email for this profile will equal the current email value on our profile that we're cloning. Same with the name. And now since we are actually inside of our profile, we can access the private state on this profile, such as the date of birth and the settings. So before we couldn't access any of this because we we're outside the class, 
But now, we can access it, so we can set the date of birth, and same with the settings. And since we set the settings, we actually do not need to set hide age, hide email, and is private, because all of those values come from our settings object. But we actually still have an issue, and that is, the settings that we set on our new clones profile are the same settings instance on our current profile. So any changes we make to the settings on the clone that we return from this method are going to affect the settings on our current profile because it's the same object instance. So what we need to do is make sure that we clone these settings as well. So let's just generate a method for that. And same kind of thing, we're gonna return a new profile settings instance and just copy all of these property values from our current instance onto the clone. And there we go, now we have a full clone, and this is known as a deep clone because we're cloning the profile, but we're also cloning all of the profile's members as well, such as the profile settings. Whereas if we didn't copy these profile settings, that would just be known as a shallow clone. So here we go, our edit profile is now a clone of our original profile, so we can make any changes we want, and now, if we decide not to save our changes, then we can just do nothing and we can just completely forget about the edit profile. But if we do save our changes, then we can assign our profile to the value of our edit profile. So our original profile gets overridden by the profile that we edited. So I'll enter a bunch of new values here. Here we go. So there is the profile that I edited. So now, would I like to save these changes? And I'm gonna say, no, I would not. And as you can see, our profile has not been overridden because we simply made all of these changes on the edit profile, which is now a completely different instance than our original profile. So that's actually one of my favorite use cases for the prototype pattern, creating clones so that we can edit the clone and have it not affect the original instance. And I will admit there are other patterns related to editing objects and being able to either save or undo those changes when you're done, but I feel like the prototype pattern is one of the cleanest solutions to that use case. So let's see the next part of our demo. In this part of the demo, we're gonna be creating a new profile. So we get the name and email from the user, and then we ask about settings. So you can enter one for just the default settings. You can enter two for secure settings. So in this case, that would be something where is private, hide email, and hide age are all true. And then you can enter anything else to configure custom settings, which we have here. We just get all that input from the user. So of course I could just define the default settings right here. So you get a field for default settings and maybe that's something like is private is false and hide age and hide email are true. And then I simply set those settings on my new profile. And then same thing for the secure settings, these would all be true. And we'll call the secure settings and set those as our profile settings. So of course we could do this here. We could instantiate these settings and then just pass them in. But maybe I want to define what is considered default or secure settings in a more centralized location in my application. Well, in that case, I could use a prototype registry. So these default settings and these secure settings would be my prototypes. And then instead of just instantiating these settings right here, I could ask a prototype registry for my default settings or secure settings prototypes. And of course, the prototype registry would give me back the clones of these settings so that I can edit them however I want on my profile. So let's create that registry. This will be a new class and we'll call it the profile settings prototype registry. And we'll have two functions on here that give us back profile settings. And the first one is gonna create our default profile settings. And then we'll have another one to create our secure profile settings. So to create default or secure profile settings, we're gonna have to clone the respective profile settings and those respective profile settings will be stored in fields on our class. So we'll have default profile settings in here and also secure profile settings. And these can actually be read only, so we'll get them through the constructor. And now to create default profile settings, all we have to do is take our default profile settings prototype and return the clone of it. And same thing for creating secure profile settings. We'll just clone the field of our secure profile settings. So now in my program.cs, let's set up our profile settings prototype registry. And that requires default profile settings and secure profile settings, which are the prototypes for a registry that will eventually get cloned. 
So let's just cut those out of our switch statement down here. Grab both of these settings. Going to have to fix these names. This line's a little bit long. Let's move this to a new line. And there we go. Now we have our prototype registry with the prototypes passed in. So we can use this all throughout our application. And obviously now we can use this down here in our switch statement. So for default settings, we'll take our registry and create default prototype settings. And then for secure settings, simply creating secure profile settings. So here we go, let's create a profile. So just put in the basic stuff. And now for our settings, we will choose two for secure settings. And we should indeed get our secure settings as we do. As you can see, everything is true. And we have retrieved these settings from our prototype registry. So I will be honest, I actually don't use prototype registries that often, but I can imagine it would be useful if say, Maybe these default and secure profile settings prototypes were stored on like a web server for some reason and it was a little bit expensive to get the values for these prototypes because you would have to hit the web server. So I think in that case, a prototype registry would definitely be good because then you'd only hit the web server once rather than every time you want to create default or secure profile settings. But other than that, I usually actually just use the factory pattern and I would just instantiate the default or secure profile settings right here where I return. But now that I think about it, I might start using more prototype registries because we pass in these prototypes through the constructor. So in my methods, I don't actually have to know about how to instantiate default or secure profile settings. That's all controlled outside of this class. So that could be nice. But regardless, I think these are some useful scenarios where the prototype pattern can be beneficial. So cloning an object in order to edit it however we want without affecting the original instance and also being able to access internal state of the object to clone in order to pass to the clone, such as this date of birth field that we couldn't get outside of the object. And since all those edits are on the clone, it's much easier to either commit or undo the edits that we've done. And then another good scenario for the prototype pattern is a prototype registry. So you can ask the prototype registry for some type of configured object and you don't have to know how it's configured. You don't have to manually configure this object and the configuration can be shared throughout your application by just using the prototype registry. And of course, this is even more beneficial if creating your original prototypes is expensive. So hopefully you all understand this pattern and can use it in your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.